If you want to practice your English for free, watch this video to the end. Hello, my name is Maddie from POC English and in this video I am going to introduce 10 online tools that you can use to practice your English for free. Let's begin with the tools. The first tool is the most basic and fundamental tool a language learner must be able to use. A dictionary. A dictionary can tell you the meaning of a word, example sentences, the pronunciation of the word, whether in American or British accent, and some extra information, such as uh, whether the word you're looking up is countable, uncountable, formal, informal, and some extra information. My favorite dictionary is Cambridge Online Dictionary, which is extremely useful and very easy to use. Let me show you how to use Cambridge Online Dictionary. Go to dictionary.cambridge.org. This is one of the best online dictionaries you can ever find. Then type in the word you want to look up, click enter, and there you go. Here's the word. Here's the meaning of the word. And you can see a couple of examples. Uh, you can have the uh, British pronunciation. Crime. The American pronunciation. Crime. You see that this word is a noun. And you see a small u, which means this is an uncountable noun with this meaning. Of course, crime can also be countable, but with a different meaning, slightly different. You see c, which means countable, an illegal act. And then looking at the first example, he has admitted committing several crimes. So you see, an illegal act, countable. Illegal activities in general, uncountable. And you can see lots of different examples. You see the parts which are bold? These parts are different collocations you can use with this word. For example, crime is the word. Commit is a verb you can use with the word crime. Accuse of or charge with. These are different collocations. Crime wave, crime rate, serious crime, violent crime. A dictionary can help you with single words. But not everything is about single words. Natural English consists of the ways in which words interact with each other. The way certain words sit together or flow together to make a natural English sentence. A group of words that often go together is called a collocation. For example, the word crime is a noun. What adjectives can you use with the word crime? Horrible? Horrific? Violent? What verbs can you use with the word crime? Hmm, commit, right? Can I say carry out crime? Hmm, is it possible to say do crime? How can we find out the collocations of a certain word? How can we understand what adjectives or what verbs or what nouns often go together? Well, you can use an online collocation dictionary. My favorite online collocation dictionary is Ozdic. Let me show you how to work with this website. Go to ozdic.com, O-Z-D-I-C.com, and then look up the word you want to find the collocations for crime, which means illegal act. These are different adjectives you can use with the word crime. You can say it's a horrible crime, horrific crime, serious, terrible, vicious, and an example one of the most horrific crimes of recent time, blah, blah, blah. You can say big crime, major crime, lesser, minor, petty, real, violent, nonviolent, perfect. And there's a long list of adjectives you can use with lots of different examples. Then, apart from adjectives, there are some verbs you can use with the word crime, carry out crime, commit crime, or report a crime. You can use crime before a verb, but what verb involves something? Crimes involving firearms or be punishable by something crimes punishable by death now this was just one example you can look up any word you want to find out what adjectives and what verbs collocate with that word you can use an online dictionary to check out the pronunciation of a word whether in american or british accent right you can play the pronunciation listen to it and then try to repeat, 
right? But how can you check whether your pronunciation is correct? Let me show you a very simple, very useful online tool that can help you practice your pronunciation and to see if you are pronouncing different words correctly or incorrectly. Let's go. Go to Google and search for definition. The dictionary opens. You can look up the word you want. And we're not going to look at the definition and the synonyms or whether it's informal or formal. Now, this is not the information we are looking for. What we are looking for is this blue button. Click crime and you hear the pronunciation. Now, click on learn to pronounce. This is the part with which you can practice your pronunciation. You see crime. OK, you play crime and you also see the movement of the lips crime. Now, what you need to do is to click practice crime. See, good job. However, if you mispronounce the word, this is what will happen. Crem. You see, instead of crem, I should say cry. All right. Thanks for the tip. Crime. Good job. You can also slow down the pronunciation. Crime. Crime. Or speed it up. Crime. You can also change the accent. Crime. But pay attention. When you put it on British pronunciation, you don't have the option of practice anymore. The practice is only active for the American pronunciation. Now it is time to work on your listening skills. As an English student, you must be able to understand both American accent and British accent. One of the best ways of improving your listening skill is by listening to podcasts. So first, let's begin with British podcasts. There are many podcasts available on the internet, but the best and the most standard British podcast I have ever seen is the BBC Six Minutes English podcast. Let me show you how to use BBC Six Minutes English podcast to improve your listening of the British accent. Let's go. On Google, search BBC Six Minute English Podcasts and click on the first link, which is bbc.co.uk. Here, you can select your language. I'm going to put this on English. And you will see the list of podcasts available on this website. Click on whichever you like. For example, Restoring Trust in Science. You can play the podcast, download the PDF, or download the audio. Let's play it. Six Minute English. At the same time, I want to download the PDF and have a look. This is the PDF. This is the transcript of what they say on the podcast. This is extremely helpful. Now, if you scroll down and go to the end of this PDF, you will see the vocabulary, the key vocabulary of that particular podcast. Cosmology, double check, duplicate, blah, 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 blah. And you can learn the new vocabulary as well. But that was British. How about an American accent podcast? If you are an admirer of the American accent like me, you can use VOA podcasts. Let me show you how to use the VOA podcasts to improve your listening skill of the American accent. Let's see. On Google, search VOA podcasts and click on the first link, which is learningenglish.voanews.com. Now you can select whichever podcast you like. For example, I'm going to go health and lifestyle. Let's see what they have in this category. All right. And I'm going to click on how to protect against monkeypox, which is a very common issue these days. Now, what I can do is to play the audio. The fast spreading monkeypox virus the led the time, World Health the Organization text. to declare a public health emergency of international concern this month. You can also download the audio. Okay, 
I introduced two podcasts, VOA for American English and BBC for British English. But do you know how to use these podcasts to improve your listening skill effectively? A few months ago, I made a video about how to improve your listening skill by listening to podcasts. You can click on this link over here and watch that video after this one. All right, let's move on to tool number six. Now it is time to work on your writing skill. A very important aspect of writing skill is grammar. When you are writing a text or when you have written a text, there are many online tools you can use to check whether your grammar is good or bad, whether there are any grammatical inaccuracies or not. Let me introduce you one of my favorite grammar checkers online. This is my favorite online grammar checker, Quailbot. You can work with this. This is extremely fun to use, easy to use, and you don't need to upgrade it if you have short paragraphs you want to check. But if you have a long text, you might need to upgrade to premium. Now, let's test it. Well, let me write down a sentence with a grammatical error. She didn't knew he has, or let's say have, no monies. Let's see. Okay, she didn't know. That's right. We should say she didn't know. He have, he had, of course, because we're talking about the past. No monies, money is not countable. So we should say money. This is a very interesting tool to use. And pay attention to the address, quailbot.com slash grammar dash check. Checking your grammar is very important. But do you know what's even more important? Learning grammar. I made a video about the best way of learning English grammar. You can click here, watch the video after this one. Let's continue. The next online tool I'm going to introduce is again about your writing skill. A very important skill in writing is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing basically means saying the same thing in a different way, but with the same meaning. Look at this example. We love plants because they produce oxygen and clean our air. Now, I want to paraphrase this sentence, keeping the meaning but changing the structure. Look at this one. Producing oxygen and purifying the air are among the reasons why trees are loved. So you see, basically the meaning of these two sentences is the same. But in the second sentence, we see that instead of clean, we have used purify. Using synonyms is one way of paraphrasing. You can see that the order of the sentence is different, right? Producing oxygen is in the beginning of the sentence. So changing the order of the sentence is also another way of paraphrasing. And you can see a minor change in the grammatical structure of the sentence. There is a passive voice here. So the first sentence says, we love trees. The second sentence says, trees are loved. Passive. There are many different ways to paraphrase a sentence or a paragraph, right? But are there any online tools that can help us paraphrase? Yes, let me show you. The online paraphraser I'm going to introduce is again Quillbot, but this time Quillbot.com. So you write down the sentence here and you'll be able to see the paraphrased version of your text. For example, let me go to VOA and copy one paragraph. I want to paraphrase this. So I go back to the paraphrasing tool, I paste it here and then I click paraphrase and you will see the changes the system makes on the paragraph. So instead of starting with WHO Director General blah 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 blah, it starts with the outbreak has continued to develop. Now you see develop has a different color. It's because develop is a synonym of a word in the original text. Now, if you click on the colored part of the text, you will see a set of alternatives. And then you can select whichever you think will best fit your paragraph. One thing I highly recommend doing is if you use this paraphraser tool, you can copy it. You can go to the free online grammar checker and you can fix all errors to see if there are any mistakes, nothing. Next tool I'm going to introduce is about your speaking skill. To improve your speaking skill, you need to talk about a subject. But what subject? 
and what should I talk about? This website I'm going to introduce is going to give you a lot of different subjects with many interesting questions so that you will be able to talk about all of those. Let's see. Go to this website, esldiscussions.com and you will see a long list alphabetically ordered topics. For example, let's try to talk about shopping. There it is. Let's click on shopping and you will see two sets of questions. Set one and set two. Ignore the advertisements on these websites. Now, you see that the first set of questions is referred to as student A's questions. The second is referred to as student B's questions. So these are questions you can use in pairs to practice your speaking skill and have a conversation. For example, this topic is about shopping. What springs to mind when you hear the word shopping? And then student B has to answer or your friend needs to reply. Then your friend will ask the same question. Question one, do you like shopping? You see, the first question is different than the first question here. So overall, you see 20 different questions that you can talk about. For which topic? For this topic. Plus, you can download the PDF or the Word version of this page of these questions. And you can print them out. If you are a teacher, you can use these in your classroom activities. So you have many subjects and many questions to talk about. But if you don't have a partner, how are you going to practice? Or even if you have a partner, how are you going to practice speaking? Do you know the best way of practicing your speaking skill in English? I have made a video about that. You can click here, watch the video. Practicing English is not always about reading books and doing exercises which are boring and difficult. You can also practice by playing games and watching movies and having fun. The next two tools I'm going to introduce are going to be really fun. But before that, you can use all these online tools to practice your English, but not to learn English. If you want to learn English, you can join my online courses. I have three courses for three different levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. By joining my online courses, you will learn grammar, you will improve your vocabulary, you will take lots of online quizzes and do lots of exercises to make sure you have learned correctly. Plus, soon we're going to have live online speaking sessions as a group. If you join today, you will enjoy 40% discount on all courses. Plus, you will be able to join the online speaking sessions as a group. And now it is time to get to the two last tools that I'm going to introduce in order to practice your English and have some fun. If you are a movie lover, you can have some fun practicing the new idioms, the new words and the new collocations you have learned. Let's say you have learned a new idiom today, as busy as a bee, which means to be really busy. Do you know how I can understand which movies have used this idiom? Let me show you. Go to this website yarn.co and search for that idiom or that particular phrase you're looking for the movies in which it has been used. For example, I'm going to say as busy as a bee and see what clips I can find. Hmm, busy as a bee. Busy as the proverbial bee. Busy as a bee that little computer. Now, what you can do is you can you also see the name of the uh, the TV series or the movie it has been used in, How I Met Your Mother 2005 season 1 episode 7. Hmm. You click on it and you can watch that particular piece of the video in which is this phrase that little computer <laughs> has been used. That's very good. That's very fun. You can see different clips of different videos, different movies, different animated uh, series or different cartoons in which that particular phrase has been used. Does he use a B in that little computer? <laughs> again. What about games? Playing computer games can help improve your English. But apart from computer games, there are some online games designed specifically for students of English to improve your skills. How? Let me show you a very interesting online tool, or let's say a very interesting website. This is a very interesting website that I have recently found on the web, games to learn English.com. 
Interesting, right? All right. What do I want to do here? Let's practice past tense. Let's see what this game is. Hmm, start. Okay, I have 16 moves and I have to... Ah, it's a matching game. So fly, past the fly is flu. Mm, nice. Speak. Hmm, is it sad? Let's see. Past of speak is sad. No. Oh, I lost one move. And it's still wrong. So let's go to spoke. Correct. Again, I lost another move, but I earned some scores. Very interesting. What happens if we scroll down? Can we see other games? No, these are comments. So if I want to see other games, I have to go back. Yes. And then, for example, compare. What happens here? Let's see. Start. Hmm. Play. All right. This is... Is it dangerous? No. Is it fast? No. Beautiful, dirty. It's big. An elephant is... Hmm. Than a mouse. More big? Uh, no, bigger. Bigger than a mouse. Ah, correct. That's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to use all these online tools I have introduced. And don't forget to join my online courses to start improving your English. See ya.